Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with combo boxes that have greater than 500 items. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, Team, SharePoint, and Power BI videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. All right, so in this video, we're going to work with a combo box that has greater than 500 items. Uh, 500 is the limit you can see in a combo box, and I'll show you that a little later. So we are working with my name list right here. So this list just has a thousand names. So if I sort the Z to A, you can see I have a thousand names in here. I believe it's the top 1,000 last names. So this is what I'm working with. I want to have a combo box that has all these names in it. And since there's a thousand items, they're all not going to show. I'm going to show you how to resolve that. Let's go ahead and navigate over to my Power App. Okay, so we have a brand new screen right here. Go ahead and import this list into my Power App. So SharePoint, Michael, Marketing, and this is the name list. And let's go ahead and put a combo box on the screen. So it will ask us for items. So if we just go ahead and did, it will be distinct. And then the list name, so name list. And then it will be title field so that is where all my names are listed the reason i'm using distinct is because this is a single line of text column type so we have to use the distinct to be able to use this in a combo box so if i was just had a smaller list this would work just fine but since i have over a thousand items in my list it will only go up to the last name lane so that should be around item 500 so we can't view anything after that. So if a user wants to go ahead and select Zimmerman from my list, they're not able to. So in order to resolve this, let's go ahead and turn off allow multiple selections. And then we wanna turn on allow searching. For some reason, mine keeps toggling back to off. So we're going to go to the is searchable property in my list over here and just set this to true. Okay, so now it's working, allow search. If I want to go ahead and search something, I'm able to. Let's go back to the items right here and let's go ahead and edit this formula. So we have the distinct right here. Let's go ahead and add a filter. So we're actually going to filter the name list depending on what's in my search field. And to do that, you want to do filter. We will do starts with. So starts with. Okay, the text to be checked is the title field. And then we want to do a comma and we want to do self.search text. So whatever I search in my comma box, it's going to get us a filtered name list based on what I searched. Let's go ahead and close up this filter, remove the extra parenthesis. Okay. So it looks like the searching field turned off again. So let's go ahead and turn that back on. That's true. I found that once I change the items sometimes, sometimes the allow searching will turn off. So if it turns off, make sure to turn it back on. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm able to search right now. Let's go ahead and search for Z. And as you can see, these items are in the 900s and we're able to see. So I can go ahead and select Zimmerman. Want to go ahead and select something else that is not shown in the first 500 items. So let's go ahead and search like T. It will give me all the names that start with T. I'm able to select those values. We'll just do one more. Let's go ahead and select P and we get all of P names. So I hope you guys enjoyed this short little video. Here's the name. If you want to sort this, you're able to. If you want to add a sort, comma, and then you can sort it by the value. My list is already sorted, but your list might not be. But that's how you do the sort. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you like it, go ahead and like, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.